Kulau Bidong or Bidong Island here just off the east coast of Terengganu, Malaysia. At first glance, this island is just another beautiful, relaxing palm trees on the beaches, almost like a vacation spot. But there is a pretty incredible and seemingly invisible or at least untold history of Bidong Island that I think should make Malaysian people quite proud or at least proud of their country. The story is when South Vietnam lost the war, the South China Sea was flooded with refugees with no money and no place to go on boats, on rafts, on homemade flotation devices and Bidong Island served as a main refugee point. In fact, there was over 250,000, over a quarter of a million people came here, lived for a little bit and moved on, including in 1978, 60,000 people during that year. So this was uh, the place where Malaysia opened their doors and gave these people some hope and a place to live. Mm -hmm. It seems like based on the little bit of signage at the front that there was a full on city happening here. Hospitals right. and places to eat and everything made out of kind of makeshift non-permanent materials. So there's almost nothing left. There's not much history to be seen in terms of, you know, churches or buildings or the hospital or the school. It's all kind of gone. But lucky for us, we have a guide with us who's actually served as a guide for Vietnamese people coming back to this island and reliving right. the two or three years they spent here. So he's got a lot of information, our tour guide, because he's firsthand talked to some of these people and they told him where things were set up and how this kind of island functioned mm -hmm. as a city, a Vietnamese city. Oh, there you have right. it guys let's explore it's it's a very funny feeling because it's like paradise it's like beautiful and mm -hmm. yet the whole boat ride over here you're just thinking of the south china sea being flooded with refugees no place yeah. to go evidently there were thai pirates in the south china sea hijacking these boats and That's stealing crazy. stealing the little money they had yeah they were already suffering and then the pirates came and attacked them and some of them raped the women it was just a tragic Oof. history but many of them also uh, they have hopes and the countries like America and the Euro European countries they came and rescued them and now they live all over the world right so, so these South Vietnamese people would have lived here for a year or two or three yeah. and then hopefully been picked up as a refugee by somewhere in the West Looking forward to learning more about this history, mm -hmm. seeing what we can see as we explore Bidong Island. Let's go. One thing I know from my experience traveling Vietnam is that Vietnamese people are some of the most hardworking people you can find. So when the population of Bidong more than 10 times increased virtually overnight from 4,000 locals to more than 40,000 refugees, you can imagine this community being set up really quickly. And what's incredible is there's almost nothing left. Just some concrete foundations, maybe the occasional sign showing you where the hospital was right in front of the jetty. Maybe an old boat like this, which my understanding is this is an original boat that the Vietnamese refugees came on and kind of beached it there. We're on our way now to go check out what's left of the one church and or temple. But it's amazing that these people set up this community so quickly, lived here for two, three, four, five years, and then there's almost nothing left. I feel like this should be some sort of UNESCO World Heritage Site, or at least somewhere where the Malaysian people are proud and basically bragging about, look what Malaysia did for these struggling people. Without this island, I mean, who knows what would have happened to these refugees. Up here on top of the hill, we've got two memorials. One is this sort of mosaic style memorial with the front of a boat honoring people who lost their lives either on the island or on their way here, as well as this more modern memorial that is built to look like sails of a sailboat. And it's just incredible that there's no signage here. I mean, this is the sort of history for me that gets my hair standing up, gets my skin going goosebumps. I feel like this should be really something that is emphasized and sort of promoted as such a proud moment in Malaysia's history. Such an interesting 
albeit tragic moment in the history of Vietnamese people. And uh, it's amazing that it's just kind of empty and no signage, no one's here. I feel pretty lucky in a sort of sad way to be here. And you were saying earlier that um, you had a tour group and one of the guests on the tour group was here when she was six years old. Yes, six as years a old, refugee. As a refugee. Wow. Yeah, one of the later, the later arrivals, uh, and she remembers very well her childhood. We have fond memories of her childhood here, and it's the first time when she came back. It was the first time she had been back here in, in 30 years. Wow, and she had fond yeah. memories of here. Yes, because yeah. it was kind of a vibrant community. Yeah, it was hopeful. It was vibrant. She got to go swimming. You know, she would play. She had wow. she had taught at the school. You know, a lot of things. Wow. Yeah. Really so this story. island really give them hope. Hope. Yeah. I think you're ready for it. Wow. Wow. Okay, let's keep going. So the Buddhist temple behind me, which has clearly been maintained since the 70s and 80s when it would have been in full use. But again, we've got this amazing contrast of just incredible, beautiful nature, kind of like paradise, and yet this overwhelming history of uh, people praying here not knowing what country they would be going to if they could ever find a country to go to if they would be staying here for their whole life um, just kind of the unknown living here and yet like I said just an absolutely beautiful ocean view sort of poetic I would say evidently bidong represented hope to all of these South Vietnamese. They obviously didn't speak the language, they didn't know where or what Bidong really was, but as they were escaping South Vietnam and they were on a boat with no particular destination, they were kind of told, say Bidong, whenever you're lost, whenever you come across another boat, whenever you're looking for where to go, say Bidong, Bidong. It just kind of meant hope to them, it meant some opportunity for a fresh start. You know, no money, no country, no nothing, but if you can get to Bidong, maybe you can start over again. So you can imagine that experience, being on a boat and just hoping for, I don't know where I'm going, but hopefully I can get to Bidong for some safety. Sort of incredible. Wandering through all of these concrete and brick foundations, I'm really starting to get a sense of how massive this island was, or this community was. I mean, rows upon rows of concrete foundations. All the wood is gone from all the houses, obviously. But everywhere you look, it's just uh, a foundation for another house. Rows upon rows upon rows. I think we're coming up to what's left of the cemetery. Let's check it out. We've made it to a part of the cemetery where there are in fact a bunch of intact graves and someone's even placed a little solar powered speaker playing some gentle music which is really beautiful and this plaque says rest in peace in this cemetery 151 vietnamese graves escaping from communism for freedom these unfortunate refugees lost their lives on this island from 1979 to 1991 in memory of you who died within the sight of freedom Wow, guys, Bidong Island, Pulau Bidong. What can you say, Ivana? Ooh. Wow, it's kind of, I don't know how I'm feeling right now. It's a, it's really heavy history in here, but mm. it's also full of hope. Many people now that lived, that used to live here in the past, live all over the world. Some live in Canada, USA, Europe and many also come back here just to visit. I actually heard a story of a lady that was part of a Vietnamese group tour that came here to look for her sister's grave and she looked all over the place and she couldn't find her sister's grave and then finally she heard some Vietnamese people speaking and she thought it was her group but she kept walking towards that sound and there was no body but her sister standing there and she found her sister's grave i thought that was a beautiful story beautiful wow mm. so like some sort of ghost you're saying yeah uh, this place is 
haunted but it's also beautiful and full of hope i don't feel creepy here i feel like really peaceful i feel peaceful I feel peace in here. Mm, it's a message you know? of hope. It's a message of what humans can do for each other. I yeah. mean, it sort of goes in line with, I think there's a big uh, part of Islamic religion is like welcoming your guests and then welcoming people to your house, welcoming people to your country. This is sort of what we've experienced in Malaysia, obviously right. on a much less scale. But the idea of these people, these Vietnamese people had nowhere to go mm -hmm. and Malaysians were like, okay, well... Yeah. Make a community for you here. Where would these Vietnamese people be if it wasn't for Pulau Bidong? Uh, potentially not alive at all. So it's a beautiful story. And what's really interesting is how incredibly fantastic the beaches are. It's like a perfect day. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. The weather is great. Similar, maybe not to the same extreme, but similar to our experience at Auschwitz. Right. Where it's like the grass is growing. We saw like a, a bunny rabbit hopping along in the grass. And it's like the place where how many thousands of people were suffering and then probably killed. So similar experience here. Mother Nature seems to have no uh, memory mm -hmm. of evil or suffering. It's beautiful. The sun is shining. Um, if you're traveling Malaysia and you're into history, this is like one of the best places in Malaysia for right. incredible history. Right up there with the pillbox in uh, Kuantan. The World War II bunker. Wow. There you have it, guys. Thanks for watching our video. I think we'll head back. I think we'll actually do some snorkeling and some other fun activities, which we'll put in a separate vlog. I think this vlog should stay more uh, somber or serious note. All right. There you have it, guys. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.